You really notice a difference from the from the sleepy time ice cream? Does it help you sleep better? I'm out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out within <laughs> like ten minutes. Wow. I'd be like, all right, it's one a.m. I need to go to bed. <laughs> the journey of 162 games. It's a it's it's a marathon. Here we are. Yes. What's going on, Pete? Chilling. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, excited to dive in. So we're down here right now in Florida. It's the end of spring training 2024, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the season's about ready to get started. Um, so today I want to just really kind of unpack what it takes for you to stay healthy and mm -hmm. optimize recovery, performance overall. Talk a little bit about your experience uh, working with us at Elevated Eats, yeah. with nutrition and the food. Um, but I'd love to start, like, obviously it's a long season. Yeah. Uh, you play more games, I think, than any other pro sport. Yes. 162 games. Yes. Over the year. And half of those, 81, are on the road. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of travel. So, you know, how does all the travel affect your ability to stay healthy and, and recover? What does that look like for you? So I, I think first and foremost, the, the biggest thing is, or two biggest things, I'd say sleep. I mean, getting quality eight, eight hours, eight and a half hours, or um, if you can't, uh, try and sneak in a 20 to 30 minute power nap some, uh, somewhere in the day. Right. Um, I know that can be hard because obviously life gets busy, but uh, that's, that's a huge component, getting quality rest, quality sleep. Um, cause I know sleep, it's not just great for rest, but I mean, that's having good sleep is paramount for recovery and, um, for all the traveling, it can be really tough to stay completely hydrated. Um, and I think hydration, it's not just great for performance. It's good for just overall body feel like not, you're not as sore and the joints and muscles don't necessarily feel as like creaky and achy when you get into the dog days of August and, uh, baseball, like a lot of people just watch the game, but, um, like for people who are diehard baseball people, they see the, the journey of 162 games. It's a, it's, it's a marathon. So, um, having to kind of control your output and, and really like understand like workload and understand like understand your own personal body and what your limits are. I think that's a, another great, um, great way to understand recovery. I mean, every guy's in, every individual is, is different, but I think like understanding what your limits are, knowing, knowing that push and pull dynamic too. But, um, first and foremost, I mean, sleep and hydration, right. those are the, those are the biggest things that have really, really helped. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, and you recently, I think you told me on Sleepwise, you uh, you invested in some new blue blockers, right? Have you yeah. tried those out yet? How, yeah, how they've been they've you? been uh, they've been awesome. Yeah. I've been driving like driving to the field in the in the daytime ones, and at night, like just hanging around the house. It's been it's been great with um, like being in baseball, and um, I know like. People think of it as an outside sport, but there's a ton of like harsh artificial light um, and also like dealing totally. with like like cameras and this and like yeah. so and being inside uh, and also being on the plane and travel TV like there's and also like our own devices like there's a lot of opportunity to just have like um, like rest my eyes and I feel like those harsh artificial lights. Um, Do you notice a difference? Huge those? difference. Yeah. Huge difference. Yeah. yeah, same for sure. Uh, that's that's cool. I I want to see more athletes start to wear them on camera. You know, like mm -hmm. so it can be talked more about because it's a key part of circadian rhythm mm -hmm. disruption or lack thereof, and and better sleep affecting melatonin. That's great. So mel uh, so sleep and hydration. Those are the two things that really are key for you on with the long season, you know, uh, let's talk nutrition a little bit. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. um, when you first heard of El our company, Elevated Eats, you know, what crossed your mind? What made you want to sign up and move forward? Well, um, really, I just think that for me, I want to gain whatever advantage I can, I can gain. So right. like just being a competitor, um, 
I mean, I, the team provides uh, like just food. They do a great job providing like um, good, tasty, delicious food. But um, what I, I wanted something like more specific for me mm-hmm. and like specifically tailored for my needs, not just like as a like being healthy, but I want to be the best I can be between the lines on the field. Right. And I felt like last year as a full complete season, I've noticed a huge, like, um, huge difference with like, uh, there's less wear and tear, less fatigue. And then I think a huge contributor, uh, cause for me, I've had my best year on the defensive side of the ball because I was, um, I mean, I wasn't inflamed. I wasn't, I didn't feel lethargic or, or bloated or, or slowed down. Um, I was able to range and get to more, get to more, um, balls, like in my area. So yeah, I just you felt, said you were more agile. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My reaction times were the best they've been. Um, but I, I don't know. I just think that there's something to, um, like feeling, feeling good in your, in your own body and feeling like minimizing the, the, uh, feeling lethargic, feeling bogged down, feeling stuck. Right. Um, in years past, like there'd be times where, um, I, I would feel like that. Mm. And last year, like, especially on the defensive side of the ball, feeling limber, feeling flexible and not feeling as stuck as much as normal. Cause I mean, it's going to happen over the course of a season, but I mean, I felt like I was like during those really difficult parts of the season, I, I feel like I had five, 10, 15% more in the tank than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Like just overall energy. And I know that may not seem much now, but that's so much, right. especially later on in the year. Right. Yeah. Each percentage edge Mm -hmm. really adds up a hundred percent yeah cool awesome um so what are what are some of your favorite you know we'll get into it today a little bit we're gonna have a behind us here we're gonna have a a fun kitchen shoot making making some meals and snacks but yeah you know what have been some of your favorite foods from us overall you know meals snacks Mm -hmm. and you know you did the pregame drinks too the pregame drinks um like I know there's a lot of beet juice in those, like, I mean, uh, promote like blood circulation yep. also too, like the pregame, like beet and blood orange gummies. I think mm. like those were really nice. Um, and also too, like any, anything like, I know like the matcha cups were great, like for pregame stuff, just to, cause just to like hone some stuff in and just to feel locked. Right. Um, I, I don't know. It's just like the, the pregame snacks, like obviously, or like a, like a pregame drink, super helpful. Yep. Um, also to the recovery ice cream, uh, or like the sleepy ice cream yes. knocks you out. And like, it gets sometimes I think finding sleep or getting to sleep. I have no problem once I'm there, but after a game, like let's say an exciting game, we win yeah. in an extra inning game and it goes until 1130. I'm not getting home until, uh, 1230. And, and then I'm trying to fall asleep at two thirty, three 3 AM. And it's like, cause so, it's really hard to come down. So the nervous system has got to be like yeah. wired. Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, yeah. Especially if it's like a 10 to nine game, high scoring game and it's right. late. And also too, it's just that ex- all the excitement and adrenaline, it's, it's really, it can get really difficult to come down. That's, right. that's why sleep is really hard to come by but having um again like with the diet hydration and nutrition i feel like it's a lot easier to come down and when i'm sleeping to recover so it's having that proper way to to help get me there which is awesome yeah the the ice cream is definitely a a crowd pleaser oh (laughs) and then the um the one thing that i'm absolutely in love with is the um uh the uh, lasagna Ooh. So the lasagnas, I know we did the the venison lasagna and it yes. was lights out. Some of my teammates tried it oh. and they thought it was killer. Down here at spring training? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. cause we, uh, we had like a big tray of it. Um, a couple of guys, obviously hunters and love venison. Yeah. So they, they had it and they were just like, wow. Yeah. They were, they were blown away. Let's talk about that. So, you know, before we hit record you were talking about how you really dig western life yeah and i think you recently bought a property in wyoming yes yep yes um you mentioned the venison um talk to us a little bit about the story on that because it wasn't your typical venison it was venison 
you actually procured yourself. You yeah. hunted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really cool to be a part of the like sustainability, um, like, and also like there's nothing processed, like nothing, no added anything. It's just straight from, straight from nature to the plate. Right. I mean, farm to table, nature to table. Um, it, I don't know. It's like having, and it's excellent uh, in nutrients, vitamins, protein. I mean, it's leaner. I mean, most venison is leaner than like chicken, beef, fish. Like it's, it's pretty insane. Like with the amount of nutrients and, and how good it is for you. Yeah. So the venison, we, we use some of the venison that you got from an animal that you hunted. So we use that recently in the lasagna recipe, a few others. Yeah. Um, when did you tell us about like, when did you hunt that, that deer? Yeah. You know, so when? that, that happened, uh, January in Texas, um, and Southwest Texas, okay. like a little East of El Paso. Um, so we went, so me and a teammate of mine, um, He's from, he's from there. Um, and he goes to this, this place. It's, yeah. uh, completely wide open, probably just over a million acres wow. worth of desert mountains and, and plateaus and desert hills. So it was, it was a wild experience, but it was, it was really nice. Um, really nice experience. And then the buck. Yeah. 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 Um, for me, I try and shoot mature, yeah. like very, very mature bucks. Um, just to, I mean, that's just like also too, like there's hunting ethics for me. Like that's, that's what I try and do. Totally. I've personally never been hunting, grew up, grew up in a family where it was prevalent. Just, right. I haven't pulled the trigger, much pun intended. Yeah. Right. But, but uh, I'd love to, man. Uh, uh, any tips for? for well, it's, I, it's a very, it's a very heavy and spiritual experience because yeah. that's, I mean, obviously like you're, it's hunting. It's like you're eventually pulling the trigger to take Taking take a life. creature's life yeah mm -hmm. but in order to justify and and have a justify the reason i know some people are against it but for me it's i do it for uh having food i, I like love venison love the taste of it and they don't sell it at stores so um right. i mean it's a very spiritual experience but also like you get to understand uh nature it's not about uh, you every hunt you go on you learn something about yourself and you learn something about the environment you're in mm. and it's um it's it's a really it's heavy but it, i i would definitely say like even if you don't pull a trigger i think being on one doing the hikes putting in the work putting in the research and understanding different patterns going on those uh three four five six mile hikes in the mornings just to look just to look through your binoculars and examine right. and fine and i mean there's a lot that goes into it um but again like yeah. you can do it um go on a hunt with with a camera like there's plenty of wildlife photographers like people that do the same thing but they don't they're not like actively hunting they're just looking for like cool action shots so yeah. um there's definitely ways to get out there and observe animals it's it's i think for me it's uh, it's a really cool way to to gain an edge uh, professionally. I and also I want to uh, every time I pull the trigger, I want to do the best I can to honor the animal and um, be thankful for the opportunity that Mother Nature is is given. Totally full circle of, of life right there. Yeah. Um, well, I, I live in Colorado. I don't really have an excuse not to uh, get out there and get it, get my hunting license and figure it out. But um, I plan to soon. Yeah. Yeah, I know some. I know some people out there. So yeah. um, if you feel motivated, then or even just to go, just right. to just to go along. For yeah, sweet, awesome, cool, man. Um, so, any other gamey meats? I know you're really into gamey type of meats, and we've used some of those. What are yeah. what other gamey meats? I love like? duck. Um, I love duck. Oh, so the like the I know you, we did like some sort of like glazed duck. That's really good. Um, I mean. The, uh, I also love the, uh, like the Bray short ribs. Like yeah. that's, that's another, that's another good one. Um, I mean, all the, all the meals have just been just delicious and obviously super, super healthy and, and really good for, uh, not just overall health, but performance. So it's been, it's been great. Yeah. Rock on, man. Tell me a little bit about, you know, one of the unique aspects about us at Elevated Eats is the fact that, you know, we're not just, 
matching you with a chef right and then saying peace right, right? we're involved in the whole process and you also talked about how personalized it is mm -hmm. there's the components that we involve lab testing mm -hmm. stool testing uh and blood testing so uh, you've done a couple rounds of that now. What has your experience been like of doing the testing with us? Had you done advanced testing like that before? Nope. What, what, did you learn a lot? Like, what, what do you think about it? It's that? really cool um, to kind of see basically like certain areas of like, of, hey, this is what you're doing well. This is what needs to be improved on. I think seeing those like concrete areas of overall health, I think that's really important, especially, especially for what I do. Right. And, um, I mean, for just anyone who's curious about it, like, doesn't matter if you're an athlete or not. Right. I think, I think it could be really useful for it. Yeah. Cool. Great, man. One thing you, I, I heard you talk about, and you actually, when you gave us a little testimonial, you talked about how, uh, you're able to maintain muscle better. Yeah. And a lot of the people I've talked to across all sports, really, it, it comes down to during the season. It's important to not put on weight and it's also important not to lose too much weight, right? Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Like maintaining? Yeah. Is that, so and then why also, is that important for you specifically? You know, Just so for me, I uh, if I'm coming in at a certain weight and I know my limitations at this weight or what I am, because mm -hmm. like if my body uh, changes and also too, like even if I'm staying at the same weight, um, if I'm losing muscle and gaining fat, then my body composition is totally different. Yeah, like the scale doesn't, I mean, it's it's a concrete number, but it doesn't right. tell the full story. So for us, um, we're really fortunate. Uh, our nutritionist, uh, Jeremy Chang's a rock star. Yeah. I think you guys have, have talked a few Jeremy's times. Jeremy's great, yeah. Yeah, um, so we have this, um, machine that basically like scans your whole body and it so gives- A DEXA or no, I, something different, it, okay. <laughs> um, full body composition. Yeah. Analysis. So you lay in this thing. It's, I mean, it's almost like this like MRI machine, but it shows like fat, mm. um, fat composition, not just like the, the old pinch test with like the little, right. um, but it shows like not just fat, like that you have like around muscle and skeletal, but it's like, like around your organs as well. So, it, and it shows like muscle comp, like we've, and he did it at the beginning of spring training and, um, the end of last year, like, like the last week of the season. So mm. it was actual concrete evidence where it's like, Hey, listen, you didn't lose a single, like a single percentage of muscle the entire season. And I stayed at the same weight the whole year. I stayed at like 235, 236 the whole year. Wow. Yeah. That's, has had that ever happened? No, before? no, I'd always fluctuate. And then at the end of the year, like things would kind of catch up and I would always be up like five pounds. Hmm. And now, I mean, I, I showed up a little, like maybe just a little heavier. So I'm 242 right now. Mm -hmm. So again, the goal is to just maintain the same, same muscle mass, like gain some, gain some muscle in the off season. Mm -hmm. And I just want to stay right here. I just want to stay right where I'm at. Cause I know, uh, putting in the work and hours of not just the, the work in the off season, but at spring training in games, like it's, it's really knowing knowing yourself knowing your limitations of like where your body's at i think that's that's why for me like i don't want to i don't want to be going like this i just want to know my baseline right that's cool uh the, you had the before and after mm -hmm. body comp testing and and it was didn't change at all which is that's yeah. that's that's what you want that's that's great um uh cool uh, um I, 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 myself, I've done one of those full body DEXA scans mm -hmm. right now, but, um, I should probably do that one again. I think that one's so important for understanding, like you said, the specific, the fat levels, the muscle mass, and for an athlete maintaining muscle, like that's where you get your power mm -hmm. and you're a power hitter. So that's essential. Yes. Uh, not just power, but just like quick twitch reaction. Right. Cause I mean, yes, I'm power but i need as soon as i tell myself swing i need to have that that body reaction it's like having those quick twitch muscles i need to have i need to have those like basically stay right here or even increase during the year because like when those deteriorate like your reaction time gets longer and then before right. you know it balls in the catcher's glove right right 
one of our ingredients actually in the pregame drinks that we use uh, is specifically good for that. I don't know if we've mentioned that before, but uh, we use an ingredient called Alpha GPC. Okay. You familiar with that? Nope. Uh, it's great for, um, it's, so it's a nootropic. It's great for mental focus and drive. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, our pregame drinks are typically caffeine free, mm -hmm. yet you still feel a nice lift. Mm -hmm. And so the Alpha GPC plays a big role in that. But Alpha GPC is also great for fast twitch muscle response, mm -hmm. which is key for all athletes. Right. Especially when you're, when you decide that you're going to swing, right? You, you need to have the best swing possible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So just know that that's one of the key okay. ingredients in, Perfect. in that pregame drink. Of course, anything and everything we use from a performance ingredient standpoint, which we use a lot, they're all NSF certified for sport, mm -hmm. right? Which is a key thing for any pro athlete, but especially right. baseball. Because yeah, for us, like we get we get tested all the time, which I'm all for. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, like. If for someone to get tested positive, uh, it's the equivalent of one drop in an Olympic size swimming pool. So that's, that's the, that's the standard. So like, right. uh, for anything to trip. So it, it's, uh, I mean, I think it's, it's great standards and then like playing within, playing within the rules or playing within the boundaries, I think is great. And you guys are obviously so resourceful when it comes to, not just like your general multivitamins, creatine or, or what have yeah. you, like, um, like you guys are nail that right on the head where it's like any sort of like small little cheat code, right? Like you, <laughs> you're, you guys are on it. Right. Yeah. Both on the NSF supplement side. And then there's the other food grade performance. Yeah. There's a lot of food grade performance ingredients that a lot of people aren't like privy to and realize can really make a difference. You talked about the beet juice as one of the ingredients for blood also, flow. Also, big fan of uh, lion's mane mushroom. Mm, big yeah, fan. You've gotten into that more since yes. working with us, right? Yes. Yeah. We use a lot of those functional mushrooms, as I'll call them. Right. Um, food grade. So yeah, lion's mane, cordyceps, and reishi are the, mm -hmm. the big, most popular three. There's a lot of different mushrooms, but so you've been using lion's mane extra kind of on your own too? Yeah. 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 Whenever, I mean, just incorporating it, like if we're not using elevated eats or if I'm like, like cooking with something like yeah. I'll like, or if I'm making like a pasta sauce, like, okay, lion's mane mushroom. You'll saute your own? Yeah. And come, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So like there's certain, great. yeah, like there's certain ingredients where it's like, okay, I'm going to make, I'm going to make it this way where, I mean, yeah, you can still make food and, but be super performance conscious. And intentional, right? Yeah. So lion's mane, great for mental focus, yeah. brain health. It activates BDNF production, brain derived nootropic factor. So it creates new brain neurons, which is crazy to think about. Right. Uh, cordyceps, great for lung health. And then you mentioned earlier the, um, the sleepy time recovery ice cream yes. that we do. So a key ingredient in that is reishi mushroom mm -hmm. so reishi is great for deep sleep and so we use multiple multiple cups of reishi in mm -hmm. the ice cream of course you can't taste any of these things no right? not at all yeah not at all so like, sneak them in yeah, yeah it's it's <laughs> it's wild because it'll just be like yeah i'm eating cookies and cream ice cream but it's like how i didn't even know there was mushrooms in them right how right. how is that yeah, possible yeah yeah and we'll also use a nsf certified for sport cbd mm -hmm. as well so you really notice a difference from the from the sleepy time ice cream? Does it help you sleep better? I'm out. Yeah, yeah, I'm out within <laughs> like ten minutes. Wow, wow, we we've we've heard that before, but um, it, it's great to to hear like from you that that actually works. You know, because well, I mean, because yeah, as as much as like I'm excited and whatever, but like I like I'll be like, all right, it's one a.m. I need to go to bed. <laughs> like yeah. it's. I mean, baseball, it's so weird because like people, people see the, the 710 to 1015. You see that? I mean, that's, but the, we typically get there between one, one and two o'clock. And then we, we leave at, I mean, it's like a, like a nine to five, but the hours are shifted. So oh, it almost seems like a 12 hour, 10 to 12 yeah. hour day. Yeah. And all said and done. Yeah. Um, so you're probably doing other recovery hacks. What are some of your other favorite? Kind of rituals or habits so, to help with recovery. I've been really like, really um, getting into the like the the cold tub stuff. Yeah. So doing that like as soon as I get to the yard, it's been it's been great. 
Um, and also too, it's weird. Like if I do it at night, I notice that I, I sleep so much better. Mm. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting. Cause like in the morning, like you jump in, you wake, you wake up and you're, you're obviously way more alert, but it's weird. Cause at night, like I have that feeling, but then also it's weird. Cause at, I just, I don't know. I just get more calm after like the effects wear off. It's, yeah. it's definitely helped with sleep. Um, and also too, I mean, after a tough day, like it feels really good. Right. Your body could use that. Yeah. Like when going to bed, the it's, it's best to have like a little bit of a cool effect because you're mostly getting into deep sleep initially. Mm -hmm. And so the cooler your body is or, or a little cooler than normal, that can help assist with the deep sleep. Um, and so it sounds like that's what's happened with the cold plunges. Are they yeah. tough for you? Like how long no. do you last in there? No, I mean, I'll, I'll <laughs> have it, like I don't have it down to, to like 38 degrees. I mean, I have, right. it, I have it in like in, the mid, like in the mid, like in the mid fifties. Oh, mid fifties. Yeah. yeah. Like, right. I mean, just right there. And then I'm in there for 10 minutes. I put on some music and then after like three songs are done. I'm yeah. Out. Cool. Yeah. So it's just like a, I don't know if it's like a, meditative or just like mm. unwinding um but in the morning it's more it's more kind of like hype hype music and then like once the three yeah. songs are done then it, then that's it great that's a nice little ritual any other key habits for you that you are, are, are key are big throughout the season or in the off season oh yeah so i i just started doing a uh, hot yoga mm. um i'm slowly but surely turning into a yogi <laughs> um but doing like starting like doing the like the the sauna yogas it's yeah. phenomenal like it's like harnessing your breath mastering like cer obviously certain poses and positions it's it's really really crazy to see because like there's been days where I've, i felt like i could just do like a back handspring or whatever like after a whole wow. day at the field and lifting and the whole bit so it's like just overall body feel it's it's like your joints and muscles just get this like WD-40. Everything just feels lubricated and you just feel like, like just elastic. It's awesome. Mm. Yeah. Well, out here in Florida, you could almost do yoga outside and it's like, yeah. you're in hot yoga. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, but like, and, like if the room's at like hundred or 105, like being in there for an hour, obviously hydrating and replenishing, but yeah. it's, is that an off season thing for you? And I've started, so I recently started it. Uh, I wanted to try it, um, during spring training because it's very similar to like the season game schedule. Right. I've tried it on game days and it's been amazing. Mm. So I'm going to keep doing it. Obviously I'm going to do it on off days. Um, but it's helped, I mean, with just overall body control, body stability, and just feel it's been totally. it's been awesome connecting the breath with the body mm -hmm. is key it's huge um awesome man well um we've certainly covered a lot so we're in you know it's beginning of 2024 you're transitioning now from spring training mm -hmm. to the season um a lot of chatter about how you know this is a big year big year you. every year exactly yeah. right D how, how do you handle that do you feel like there is like um added pressure each next year or like playing for the next contract or no. like no, what is okay. that like for you so i mean everyone yeah it's a valid question um and i've gotten a lot of it but my job doesn't change i gotta i still have to go up there for four or five at bats every day gotta catch the ball throw the ball hit the guy in the chest and then run the base as well and be a good teammate right so i mean and you've been playing yeah, baseball since, yeah since i was like three years old so yeah. it's a lot of the i mean that's a huge mental part of the game right that people have to figure out a way to block out and totally my way is just focusing on my job like my job is no different my team is no different and it's i'm competing right so my my focus is just on like hey let's just beat the guys who are facing today yeah like and just compound good days exactly stack them mm -hmm. amen man well that that uh, i know it's i know it's i can only imagine what it's like for a pro athlete it's a grueling season got the outside pressure it really sounds like you've got everything dialed in you're grounded you're focused you've got the hacks that you've invested in yeah. to help give you an edge yeah um you know what what other uh 
what tips might you have for someone that's like interested in, in, in uh, improving nutrition as an athlete, you know, for, uh, for where they're at and like with, after your experience with us, cause you've been working with us for how long? Now? Yeah. So this is a uh, second, starting uh, your second season, second season. Uh, but like I've noticed that my output in my off season work was incredible. Mm. Um, my lifts conditioning, like j what I was been able to handle is tremendous. Like this, is, it was my most successful off season yet. Mm. Um, and I, it's as the course of time, I, as I'm maturing and understanding what I need to dial in to get ready, it's, I mean, you guys were not just like great during the season, but the off season was money. Like this was like, this is the highest output I've been able to, to do and handle. Um, and I mean, I train hard. I mean, I got yeah. one speed and <laughs> um, it's, it's, I got one speed and it's go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, so that's, I mean, that was super helpful for, I mean, not just like gaining muscle and, and being able to handle a high workload, especially in the off season, but for recovery as well. I mean, um, honestly, just give it like anyone who's interested in elevated eats, if you're an athlete or not, just give it a go. Like you'll, you'll just notice like over the course of time, I think it'll, t it takes like two months to really feel the full effect of it. Um, just like anything, like you have to like slowly build and build and build. But once right. you, your body kind of gets used to getting all the right things, like it's, it's like a slow, steady climb. It's, it's truly amazing. Mm. So, but again, like just overall in general, the most basic things, find a way to get good sleep, hydrate and put good fuel in your body. Amen, man. Well, Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, for, for sure. You. And and I think we're gonna head next into the kitchen to make make some food. Are you, we're gonna test your chef skills. Let's do it. Are you are you ready for that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. Let's do it, Pete. Yeah. Good stuff.